Welcome back to a day in the life 3D experience. I'm Nick Sweeney, and in this episode, let's talk about logging issues on the platform. Engineers are constantly fixing designs, whether standards have changed, customer preferences have shifted, or testing revealed a weak point, we have to keep things up to date. Here, we've been alerted to a problem with an existing gear design. It doesn't have enough teeth. Starting from the email we've received, let's navigate to the platform and take a look. On our dashboard, we see there are a lot of open tasks. Most of them have due dates listed, so we can select the newest one and view our potential issue. The task has a few things to note. First, we see the attachments. Attachments are files that are specific to this issue. For this example, that's the gear. We also see the context. Context shows us the assembly where we noticed the issue in the first place. Let's look at the problem in detail by dragging our context over to the 3D Play app on the right. If we know where the gear is, it's easy enough to zoom in and find it. However, if we aren't sure, we can always drag the file in from the attachments. Now we've confirmed the problem. There are 10 teeth instead of 12, so let's log this officially as an issue. To do this, we'll drag the context to our issue management dashboard and view it under the Issue 3D Review app, which looks pretty similar to 3D Play. Now this is our dashboard, and we like viewing issues this way. However, yours may look different, that's just part of the beauty of a customizable system. We'll click on the plus on the Issue Management app, and that opens our new issue dialog. In it, we have a few fields to fill out. First, we title the issue. As we go, the platform is going to try to identify any related issues, and you can connect them to each other. Next, we'll fill out a description and set a priority. We don't necessarily have to fill out every field, so we can leave the recommended solution blank, but make sure we use the date picker and set a due date. Next, we need to set the contents. This is what object we need to fix. If we click on the little location button, that lets us select the exact component that needs to be fixed. Once we pick the one we need, notice that the platform fills out the reported against and the context fields. Now we know what to fix and the assembly we need to reference while working on the solution. We have attachments as our next tab. This is where you might upload a change request form, pictures, or anything that explains the issue in more detail. We can add a file we already have in the platform, or we can use this as an opportunity to add our form if it's not already on the platform. Moving on to the members tab, this is exactly what you expect. Here, we assign owners to the task, co-owners, as well as people assigned to work on it. We can also list responsible organizations if this is a vendor or an outside source. Let's assign one of our other AEs, also named Nick, to work on this design. Last, let's finalize the task. We can set the task to require approval. If you need sign off from someone like your manager, you flip this switch. And if this is a typical setup, maybe you assign a similar user to work on problems frequently, you can save this as a template and have some of the information fill out automatically next time. We're going to save this as a draft. If we click Start, that kicks off the process and will notify our assignees of their new tasks. So we can see our tasks and expand out our new one and make sure that everything looks right. We get our view of the issue and the context over on the right-hand side. On the bottom, we see any relevant information about the issue. This is the related objects, assigned members, attachments, comments, and history. As soon as we kick off the process, the history will start filling out what's going on, and we are officially on our way. 